Hello and welcome to another episode of Rich Hangs Left Square Theatre Podcast with me and my guests, the Penguins from the Penguin Go game that you can get as part of the Oh Frig I'm 50 DVD Kickstarter. Go to richhang.com and you'll be able to find the link to that. Um, I'm on tour with my show Oh Frig I'm 50. Go to richhang.com slash gigs and you'll be able to see if I'm coming near to you. Let's see where I'm coming on the week that this goes out. Oh, well, I've just been to Canterbury. I hope you enjoyed it if you came there. should have mentioned that last week. Uh, 28th of March, I'm in Reading at the Reading Hexagon. It's a very large venue. Uh, and uh, the 29th, I'm in Eastleigh. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. And then the week after that, I'm going to Dublin and Belfast. And uh, then it's my wedding anniversary. I'm, I'll have been married for six years to my beautiful wife, uh, Katie. Uh, so uh, she's great. Uh, I've done quite well. And she's still with me, at least when we recorded this. I don't want to be presumptuous. Uh, so do come and see that show. If you want to see the DVD record, come to the Queen Elizabeth Hall in London on May the 4th. There's 900 seats to sell. I am not that confident that we will sell that many. So it'll be lovely to see you at that uh, or come to anyone on the tour or buy the DVD or do the Kickstarter for the DVD. Uh, anyway, let's enjoy... The ladies from the All Killer No Filler podcast, Kiri and Rachel, coming up right now on the Change the Square Theatre podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man whose nose is still red from last week. But you can't hear that on the audio, thank goodness. It's Richard Herring. <laughs> oh man, you're much better than uh, much better than last week's audience. They were terrible. Those guys were awful. So, um, welcome to the show. Uh, this is Richard Herring's... Leicester Square Theatre podcast, but I was um, at a meeting of all the ex-leaders of, the, of UKIP uh, <laughs> the other day, and they all call it Rich Chang's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. So it's, um, yeah. Uh, well, well, it's been a, what a, what a week it's been. Whew. All the stuff that's been going on, eh? Uh, let's have a look in the audience, see, see who we've got in the audience. We've got a, a, a gentleman here in a... He's got a, a work shirt on, but he's got his sleeves rolled up because he's out to have some fun on a Monday night. What's your name, sir? Sven. Sven? Sven. Sam. Okay, that's not as exciting. <laughs> uh, and uh, what do you do for a living, Sam? A-I-T? Uh, accountant. Accountant? Okay, quite a few accounts. It's going up. It's going to mark, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, there's no, one, no nuclear physicist. What is the best number? <laughs> In Europe? Seven? Yeah. Oh. Uh, and uh, what about you, sir? Hello, what's your name? I'm Michael. You're Michael. Are you a metal detector? <laughs> no, it's not. It's a, that's a thing, isn't it? It's not what they're called. Uh, what do you do for a living, Michael? Uh, I don't know. I'm a student. You're a student. What do you study? Uh, science. Science? <laughs> it can't just be science. It must be more than... So what's your speciality? You've got a beard, man. You're not like... Uh, the, 13 years old studying science, you're studying something specific. I'm going to go and botany. It's botany? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is the best of the plants in the Southern Pacific region? <laughs> palm trees. Palm trees. <laughs> I love the way he did it. it went, palm trees. That is, the, that is a definitive answer. That was part of your module for your final degree. And uh, you've got a 2-2 two -two on that bit. So well done, Michael. Uh, thanks for coming along. Uh, do you like uh, the work of Charles Darwin? It's good when he went all around uh, the Galapagos Islands. Wasn't it? That was good. And we worked out, didn't he, that, uh, about evolution and stuff. You must have loved that when that happened. <laughs> OK, I'm going to move on. Uh, so... Uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm sure I had something to talk about, but let's, let's not worry about it. Uh, uh, let's introduce this week's guests. They are probably best known. One of them is best known for her appearance on Dan, Dan Nightingale's In The House podcast. And one of them is best known for her appearance on Gary Delaney's Panel Beaters. And I don't need to tell you which way round that is. It's Kerry Pritchard McLean and Rachel Fairburn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Come in, Kerry Rachel. 
knocked it down. Thanks for coming along. Thank you. Thanks for having us. How are you doing? Yeah, we're all yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. She didn't touch Can't. the floor. It's adorable. You're like you're in a grotto. Uh, yeah. Oh, I it's, don't either. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you, sit, you can sit a bit quite near the front if you like, and then your feet down. I'm quite small as well. I noticed on your podcast you both like tall men. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we do. I feel very affronted. <laughs> do you know, um, you're the perfect size, though. When they, um, when they advertise sofas, they deliberately get sort of... <laughs> Little people, so the sofas look bigger. That's true. Um, okay. In adverts, they have yeah. tight. So you two would be an absolute showing would for you... a sofa advert. Oh, so brilliant. if it doesn't pan out, mate. Yeah, that's good to know. DFS. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look out for it. So well, look, you're you're both. Uh, I, I know you both uh, from uh, the All Killer No Filler podcast, which we'll talk about first. Some fans oh. in. Hi guys. Some Thank fans you. of murder in nice. tonight. <laughs> yeah, keep your um, eye on them. Which is it, it's. Well, it's, in, it's interesting that I've, I've, I was aware of both of you before, but that, this, is, this is the first kind of thing that I've re really uh, heard a lot of you in. And it's, it's interesting that, A, that can happen now, that the, the podcasts are working in that way, that people, uh, mm -hmm. that people are coming to new comedians in this way. But also, it's quite a bold uh, decision to make a podcast about serial killers. I don't <laughs> think it is. Uh, in fact, it was Dan Nightingale uh, who said to me, he referred to our podcast as being niche. And I was like, mm. bitch, please. <laughs> because <laughs> I think, what I think is amazing about podcasts is that people, you, you know, you just make content and then the, the, like, the world has decided what the, they want to know about. Yeah. And principally, it's football, feminism and murder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, like one day we're going to coalesce and make something about all of them. But like, yeah, we just started, we had an interest in, yep. I guess, true crime, broadly speaking. Yep. And, and then we started years ago doing this podcast. Which we didn't think anyone would listen to at first. And yeah. then as it started to take off, it's... We, we're still shocked at how... Well, even though there's a lot of people interested in true crime, we are still a bit like, oh, this is amazing. Like, so well, many I, people I listen guess to the, it. The, I mean, yeah, you're right. There are lots of true crime things, but they're quite serious. In, you yeah. know, mm. in, and they're a bit worthy and often a bit like... And a lot of those true crime things are just kind of trying to lead you on to listen to the next one. And they go, oh, will we find out the answer? And you get to the end of them, and they go, oh, yeah, no. we don't know. We don't yeah. know. <laughs> They're still all in prison. Well, and, and so to, to decide to... I mean, you, you, you go straight in and refer to this. You don't, you don't want to be... You're not laughing at the idea of people being murdered and you're not yeah. laughing at the victims. But to, to decide to do... That is your first thing, I think, or is it the first podcast, is a, if it was your first podcast, to decide to do a comedy about serial killers is quite bold, is what I'm Yeah, I guess we didn't have careers to fuck back then. <laughs> 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 and thanks to the podcast, we've actually sort of got one now, <laughs> ironically. But yeah, I guess... That, I mean, what, my, one of my fears... Slash, uh, fingers crossed it happens, is that the Daily Mail would get hold of us and be sort of fake outraged. Yeah. Because, mm. like, we could do with the PR. <laughs> <laughs> but I think people could, like, if they wanted to, take stuff out of context. And yeah. I think when people, like, so we were chatting about this at dinner just then, that some people were like, well, I think it's distasteful. I'm like, well, you definitely haven't listened then because we always try and stay on the right side of things. And I, I kind of think, do you think it's that sort of natural to be interested in this stuff? I think so. I think... I don't know. Well, having said that, we've always been interested in macabre things and dark things. And I think a lot of comics do tend to be interested in sort of the darker side of life. Definitely. And uh, I don't know. I think it's quite... A, I think it's a natural thing for a human who's well-behaved and decent, us, uh, <laughs> to be interested in something that's so far removed from something you would do. So really, if, you, if you're not interested in it, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Is what, yeah. Is if what you I'm think we're distasteful, at. actually, yeah. you're all the weirdos. So. Well, I think. But the great thing about podcasts, uh, you know, and I discovered this very early on with uh, the first one I did with Andrew Collins, is you know people don't have to listen to it, right? And so it's not like a radio show where it might be going to someone's house. You make mm, a decision yeah. to listen to it. Yep. So if you're not going to listen to something, if you're, you know, you'd have to want to be offended to listen to yeah. something about murder if you thought the, you know, the idea of talking about serial killers in a occasionally light-hearted way is is sick. Um, but I think that's that's. I, I wonder if you know. I, I think most people are, are are interested in crime and murders partly out of a, a level of you you think about the worst thing that could possibly happen and mm -hmm. it's a way of dealing with the awful side of the world. But I also wonder whether I was wondering whether the comedy aspect of it, in a way, serial killers are sort of the comedians of the serious world. <laughs> 
<laughs> in that they behave really inappropriately, right? So is that is that part of? Yeah, they, they barely they, make a living out of it. They they disobey the rules of society. <laughs> We and and, 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 and yeah. but but also because they're behaving in such a way that is so alien to most people mm -hmm. that it sort of is there's a there's a very dark humor to it because you're not meant to kill lots of people and wear their heads <laughs> as hats. I mean, I mean, you're making that statement, not us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, there's a there's a sort of there's a sort of comedy to it that's a twisted comedy, if you see what I mean. That's that's gone so far. It's not funny, but it's. But there's they're the commit. Do you know what I'm trying to say? No, yeah, actually, I'm, 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 I'm going to distance myself yeah, from okay. this. I, I was hoping you'd take that. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's going to come up with something. Well, no. I, I, th I sort of think I know what you're getting at. So, yeah. like, w someone who's not a serial killer, but like, got was one of the things that I got was really interested in was Ed Gein, mm -hmm. yeah. and he the fucking mad shit he used to do with the bodies that he exhumed. Like, he made belts from nipples, and he made like a. a pull cord for a lampshade with a pair of lips on the end which mm. is just a lovely flourish <laughs> <laughs> and and soup bowls uh, made out of like skulls and just look it was just like really it was like hobby craft but obviously very like macabre is and it, I just think there's something fucking oh, uh, is a one man Etsy <laughs> <laughs> that's what he was yeah and he had a lampshade made out of a face yep. and like all this is is awful but also yeah it's funny isn't it <laughs> if that was in Tiger we'd all have it like <laughs> <laughs> but it's so it's so it's that it's that you it's, know, almost it's wrong you know it's wrong yeah, yeah. Uh, but they, it's, and it's comedy gone wrong <laughs> in a very serious way <laughs> but do you think I've always thought I'm surprised and then maybe there is one but I'm surprised there hasn't been a comedian serial killer, or has there been one? Oh, someone told me, a comedian that you know, yeah. uh, told me, Stuart Lee, told me, <laughs> that, um, you do know him? Uh, that told me that there was one in America that was caught, and because it is a great, we've talked about this before, it's a great lifestyle, because you travel from yeah. city to city, you're never there very long, no one fucking cares that you are. So, like, it's the perfect way to get away with loads of murders, and there was one in America who killed about six people. And also, a lot of, I won't say a lot, some comedians do have the same personality aspects. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> as serial killers. Yeah. yeah. Um, sort of self centered, very sort of focused, not really interested what other people think about them. Tricky relationships with their mothers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously not all, uh, <laughs> just other comedians. But comedians would be the serial killers that write to the papers going, you still haven't got me yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, they'd be those ones. Uh, we, have, we have discussed that, though, haven't we? Who yeah. on the circuit yeah. would be a serial killer? We think at any point there's six yes. comedians <laughs> on the circuit, <laughs> like on the verge of going on a spree, but yeah. they're not organised enough. I mean, you know, it might, it might come up. It might come up. Yeah. At some point, I mean, so. I hope so. Yeah. It'd be Imagine great for the you. listening figures then. <laughs> well, if one of them's you, then that would be. <laughs> That's the other thing that we talk about. If one of us cover. gets off, yeah. Like that, the other one's going to do really well selling their story. Yeah, I'd it'll be, be her as well. I, I'd be on this morning like like that. I mean, it'd be really sad if something happened to Kiri. She's my friend, and I care very much about her. But if something did happen to you, it'd be like, oh, hi, Holly and Philip. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a really terrible thing that happened. Um, I've got a book coming out. Why are you um, talking to them like you want to fuck them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was going to have, have a go on any breakfast team, it would be Holly and Phil. <laughs> I don't think that's controversial, is it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'd have a go on Holly and make Phil watch. That's where I am with things. <laughs> What's the other option? Piers Morgan and... Eamon Owens and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's been to that party. <laughs> uh, well, what's nice to think about about the the podcast? We'll, we'll move on to other stuff as well. But the is that you get a lot of the personality of the both of you. So, like, although you know it is about the, each week, you'll you'll look at the life of a serial killer, but you'll fly off at tangents and talk about you know mm. what kind of guys you fancy and you know what what you've been up to and. You know, the, we, we learn a lot about you two through it. A little I mean, bit was, too much. Sometimes. You talk about your sister, yeah. him, the one I was listening to, was very strange fantasies about your sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and... then I feel like there needs to be some. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Um, it was when it was the one where you were speculating what she would do if she was the pilot in the flight. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah kick, break when she breaks into the, the cockpit. Yeah. yeah, doubt it. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. You can tell who's listening to it just from that. Yeah, but you know, but then again, though they 
because it's, it feels very improvised, whilst you, you've obviously researched the each uh, subject, mm-hmm. but then you'll just chat about it and, and chuck stuff in and you're improvising jokes around it and, mm-hmm. and then we, we find out about you. So have you found, you've, you've been doing live gigs with it yeah. and they've yeah. been doing very well and lots of people have been coming yeah. to see them. It's and been so lovely. You've, yeah, it's yeah. been brilliant. We've... And so people kind of know about, as much about you as they do about... I mean, yeah. they know too much about me. Yeah. <laughs> I, they do know too much about me. I think as well, it's really strange because sometimes I'm, people talk to you afterwards, which is lovely, and they'll tell you, talk to you about something that you've, you've said, and you're like, oh, I don't remember any of that. Yeah. Did, did I actually say that, and why did I say it? Because reco- obviously we record it just... We used to record it in my spare room in Manchester, and then we record it... Because I, I live in London now. I know. And uh, we record it whenever we can, don't we? Yeah. But because we're just chatting to each other as, as friends, we do sort of say things sometimes and we'll sort of go to edit it and we'll think, oh, should we keep that in? Uh, yeah, often as well I drift off when I'm editing it, so I'm like, yeah, I think yeah. that's fine. <laughs> so like, I'll, I'll sort of make sure the end in the beginning's all right and then I've not really listened to it yeah. in the middle. And then someone will come and tell you like, Oh, by the way, you should beep out your parents' phone number that you said out loud <laughs> yeah. on the podcast. That, that was my error, that one, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, was my, yeah. <laughs> I went, mate, can you take my parents' home line down, please? <laughs> um, yeah, but no, it, it's... Yeah, because we do... It is, the other thing is, I think maybe... I, maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but what people like about it is it is like a genuine uh, female friendship like that is just this is what we would talk about whether there was a recorder on or not and yeah. like so often when you see any kind of portrayal of women like they're in competition with each other or they're you know like uh, you know just talking about guys not that we don't talk about that fair old whack <laughs> uh, but you know it is just like I think lots of women like it because like oh this is what I sound like when I talk with my girlfriends because yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. that's the th- mad thing is when we do the live shows and meet them afterwards uh, ne- nearly everyone we meet we're like well I'd just be mates with you Mm. I mean, there's the odd fucking oddball, but like, <laughs> no, genuinely, generally, they're like, oh, these are people we'd be mates with. So I think it's people who sort of feel like they're hanging out, yeah, um, which is a really nice thing. Yeah, yeah. well, I think that then, no, that is how podcasts more than radio, which that used to be radio was that medium where people felt they were. Yeah, but I think it's it's even more intimate, and you you know, in in terms of you do really get to the heart of people because I because I think it's you know podcasts are generally more off the cuff. Like, Definitely. like mm. I am talking now. If this had been prepared, what I was saying now, <laughs> it would be better than this. <laughs> uh, but it's a bit, that's the point, you know. So people, you know, and you can't hide. You know, when you've done forty or fifty of these things, you can't hide. You can't. You can't really be hiding behind a persona, you know. Even if you no. were, some mm. of it's going to come out, you know. The, oh yeah, the, definitely. The, the real you. Persona the, slipped. But, yeah. yeah, if there ever was one. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I don't, yeah, because I don't know how you would even switch that. That's why the live shows are really fun and easy because you just come on stage and you're more so than stand up. That like I haven't reached that bit quite with my stand up. I'm still a version of myself with the podcast. I'm just myself. I think the one thing I've from doing this podcast for so long, I think it has changed my stand up slightly. And I think I'm definitely, I'd say ninety percent myself, absolutely myself. Yeah. on stage now whereas before I used to be quite deadpan and I don't know quite awkward I think from sort of doing this for so long and doing live shows I think I've been more myself yeah. on stage really it's quite it's quite weird actually yeah but I think you know that's the, the, when I started a long long time ago uh, you know, if you wanted to do a, a, sh- a show where you were chatting with somebody, you had to get a radio show or, you know, mm. or just do it on the tape and send it to Radio's your friends. Radio's dead. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> and I said that as someone who loves it. Yeah. But, like, oh, I mean, you couldn't put... We'd never get, like, I love Radio 4, but there's absolutely no way they're going to put two women with regional accents on talking about murder no. so, and cocks. There's yeah. just no way they're going to do it. But then, you know, you, but also you don't want, you know, it's good to be doing something that isn't trying to get like a radio show. It's good to be doing something. This is, you're clearly doing something that's an end in itself. You want to do this show and you're doing this show yep. and, and then people get to get to know you. But I think also you get to do loads of it and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, if, even if it was a radio show, you might get six a yeah. year and then six the next year mm-hmm. and then they might go, oh, we've had enough. Yeah. You know, but to be able to do 40 or 50 or as many as you want, this is 172 of these. Ooh. You know, it's probably, in there, probably enough. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, so David says we have to do more. Uh, and, you know, when you do, you find, you find life in something, you know, there's, there's, there's always 
wet places to go with it, you know, and you're you're going to get better at what you're doing. So it's it's really it's it's a, if you haven't listened to the podcast, please do listen to this podcast. And it is it puts a, a complete lie to that idea that female stand ups will talk about this and this and this. I don't even want to go into those stupid. Mm-hmm. But you don't, you know, you don't. It's it's not what people who uh, are, whose opinion we shouldn't even be uh, contemplating <laughs> think. Good comedy that you brought is. it up and made it okay. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, but you didn't. You, you were put together by. You hadn't met each other. Is that true? And people just said you two should get together and do something. Is yeah, that? Yeah, we hadn't met because. I mean, it's getting better, but it's quite. It was quite rare to have two women on the same bill in yeah. comedy. Yeah. Um, so we didn't really cross paths. And people kept saying to us, oh, you should meet uh, Kiri, you should meet Rachel. Uh, at first, it was a bit like, oh, yeah, who's this thinking she knows more about serial killers yeah. than me? Yeah, I was <laughs> like that. And I knew <laughs> that you were fit as well. I was like, she sounds like a cunt. <laughs> 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 but, and then we discovered that we actually lived across the road from each other. Yeah. Easier which, to kill in one is, night. <laughs> <laughs> which is so northern, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we, then we, we, we did actually re- record one episode of, of the podcast but it, it was frankly bizarre do you remember it do you remember it's probably for the best um oh, it was, was it on like my phone and it we never used oh it? Yeah, we never used it uh it, it was me rambling on about a local radio dj it was yeah it was that shit and uh we never did it and then we once we worked out how we were going to structure it and we did the, the first one um but when we met we weren't we weren't friends. No, you can tell that from the first. Yeah, first one definitely, and then the second one gets better. That there's two people who don't really know each other yet. Yeah. Right. So like, whereas now there's, I think there's no conversation that we wouldn't have, at all. <laughs> <laughs> Some I wish I could take back and not hear again. But like, yeah, w- w- I think that first I one. I know you exactly what you're don't... referring to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like. I think in the beginning you can tell that we don't really know each other. It's, and, and that's a, it's a bit sort of like so I guess it's a bit stilted whereas I think now it's just a friends having a chat yeah yeah, yeah so it was yeah we kind of but people kept going oh you should meet so and so because obviously we were bringing up serial killers in green rooms yeah <laughs> <laughs> behind gigs which is such a fucking bold move to do like three years into comedy um, but yeah I think people kept being like you need to meet her you need to meet her which is really nice yeah yeah um, and so, look, who are your? I mean, it's sort of weird to talk about favourites. Top, top three. <laughs> top three. Top <laughs> three. Well, you you said backstage that you you liked them when you were growing up. I did. I used to read like, and weirdly, the, the I read the which you talked about the Fred West book. Uh, Happy like murderers. Yeah, and I read it when I was on my own. On I went on a holiday on my own in uh, to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about about and this, but the location is fucking bleak, man. Yeah, and I was reading that book sure. on my own, oh. and it kind of just and I, it really sort of freaked me. It's a, I mean, it's a, it is a brilliant it's, book, yeah. but brilliant. it's also just it's too. I just thought I don't. Why, what am I doing? Yeah, this? as I kind of I did not. I didn't. It's not like I lost interest in it, but I just sort of didn't. I, ne- I never read any of the books again after that. But I did read quite a few of those. I think Dennis Nielsen, I was always... And Jeffrey Dahmer, I think you guys are quite interested in those yep, two. Yeah. Uh, they're kind of fascinating characters. And again, there's sort of some dark comedy in there between... Oh, mm. definitely. You know, yep. I mean, he was always cracking jokes, Nielsen, wasn't he? Like, um, what, you know, oh, trying... Da- it was Dahmer that was... Uh, Dahmer was the one who yeah. used to play The Room for Laughs. Yeah. Nielsen was a, a good old trade unionist, <laughs> yeah. um, which are uh, invariably humourless, um, <laughs> although I am a big fan of a union. Um, but yeah, yeah but, but weird, funny stuff happens. And, like, this is the thing, is, like, we've always been, like, you never laugh at the victims because that's... It's, it's just rules of comedy. You don't punch down. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, that murdered sex workers already been through enough they don't need me trying to make a pun on their name mm-hmm. like that's it's just horrible yeah and um, so they but there's loads of funny stuff that happens because for a start the police are fucking inept yeah. so there's never ever a case where they don't drop a bollock or do something just like absolutely mad decision gets made or someone gives some bonkers statement yeah, or just totally disregard something that's really important yeah Especially well, I guess for someone to get somebody a serial killer, you've got to kill four or five people. Is it three or four or five people? You say it's three with a right. cooling off period in between. Yeah. Um, so we're like, not sticklers for the rules, but you know. 
you know, the police have to be slightly incompetent to allow it to go that far, really. You, yeah, well, you know, we got, have to be very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a theory that if there was a serial killer who murdered policemen, they wouldn't make it to being a serial <laughs> yeah. killer because I think that they would close ranks and find them. But what I find really fascinating about true crime and serial killers in particular is every single one will tell you something about the world that they occupy. So how they mm -hmm. get away with things always tells you about the world. So. Uh, like so, uh, Colin Island and Dennis Nielsen, uh, they, they killed gay guys in a time when uh, no one cared about the gay community. Yeah. So De uh, Colin Island did it, and uh, this was at the time that like the Royal Vauxhall Tavern was being raided by police wearing rubber gloves and saying horrible things about AIDS. So they just kept dismissing it as. Mm -hmm. Gay sex games gone wrong. Yeah. So it just tells you about the world that same it with, lives in. Same with Dharma, that as well. Yeah. Because the police actually found him with one of his victims. Oh, it yeah. was an underage boy, and they actually didn't they use the phrase, oh, we just thought it was gay stuff. Yeah. And they just, he ended up murdering him. When they, they took had him back to his house. Yeah, they took him back when they had an opportunity to save him. So it does, it shows you a lot of the issues around at the particular time that like Peter Sutcliffe as well. Yeah. The, the sort of issues around the way sex workers were treated and how sort of women were thought of. Um, it's really sort of interesting and depressing. Yeah, um, really depressing. Sort of the, the issues that it sort of brings up really. Because when Peter Sutcliffe was obviously killing sex workers yeah. and then the first time he killed someone who wasn't, everyone's like, we've got to find this monster. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for about four girls ago. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's just that people don't, you find out who the world doesn't give a shit about mm -hmm. and what the world prioritizes. So there's, there's even things like the Green River Killer killed absolutely loads of women over like decades and you don't really know about him because he was discovered very close to 9-11. So like nothing was really in the news cycle. So like it, there's this huge, huge, massive serial killer in America that people haven't really heard of. Um, because it, it like there was bigger stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I just think it's like I just think it's really really interesting. It tells you a lot about history. Yeah. No, that's true. That is true. Yeah. It's uh, yeah it's terrifying. Um, well, let's talk about you. Let's talk about. It's terrifying. This feels like all the dates I've been on where yeah. I just like talk nonstop and then they go. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that Uber surge has gone down, so I'm just going to order it now. <laughs> and I'm usually sat in the middle. <laughs> Chaperoning. I'm, for I'm their sure. Safety. I'm sure we'll come back to serial killers because uh, I. Uh, it is. Uh, you know. It, it's. It, it's interesting why you're fascinated by it and what you know and 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 when it's. That, it's interesting that it's. In the end, it scared me. I think being interested in it, but it scared me too much, and so it sort of scared me off a little bit. You know, that's kind of. But that's sort of what it, you're. You're pushing yourself by being interested in it, but it's true. You know, the fact it's true as well. It's. Yeah. Mm. It gives it a sort of added. You know, both negative and positive aspects. I suppose it is. It is fascinating that that, um, that that people have this interest. Let's talk a little bit about both of you uh, and separately, and what you've done separately before you uh, got together. I mean, you've both been doing stand up. You worked with uh, uh, Kiri. You worked with mentoring with vulnerable kids, which you just did did, did a show about. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> what a laugh riot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so where you used to live, but we live in a very... We live by Bird and Mannings. Well, you don't anymore. You fucked off, aren't you? Um, to I'll find your back. fortune. Yeah, you, you so will. Yeah. It's, the booze is too dear <laughs> down here. Um, so we live uh, really close to Bird and Mannings Embassy Club, like about two streets away. So I started volunteering a while ago in the area. And then, yeah, my show last year was about working with a young girl and sort of everything that we went through together and kind of taught each other. And, uh, spoiler alert, not, not a happy ending. Um, but, yeah, it was a show I really wanted to really wanted to do and kind of tell that story. Yeah. Yeah. And are you she just... didn't give a shit about anyone. <laughs> Have you ever volunteered? Yes. Bullshit, what? I'm here. Oh, look at that I'm pause. Here this evening on a voluntary basis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. But was the show partly about whether the reasons you people volunteer for stuff, though, and whether you're doing it for good reasons, or, well, selfish reasons? Oh, or, absolutely. Uh, like, I'm not that kind of smug. I acknowledge that, like... So the nicest thing about volunteering is telling people that you volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I've recently gone vegan for exactly the same reasons. <laughs> I'm actually a vegan now. But like, yeah, it's, there's loads of, obviously it's, it's not a wholly selfless act. There no. are, you know, you do it to make yourself feel better about all the things that aren't right in the world. But I mean, you can do the right thing for the wrong reason. I don't give a fucking shit as long as you're out there doing it. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm honest about it, in a lot of time it's shit. 
um, because teenagers are boring. <laughs> and they don't mention that in the training, but they are boring, awful, selfish, horrible people. Um, but do go and give you time. <laughs> and you've just well, you've been recording with uh, Go Faster Stripe. Yes. Who, who are filming us right now oh, again? Very you've been good. Filming all weekend with you. Yes, but they're uh, sick of me by now. I mean, I'm sick of myself. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> so your your show was Her, Her Majesty. Her Majesty. That was my show from Edinburgh last year, and I, yeah, I filmed, that was the last time I was doing it on. When did I film it? Saturday yeah. in Cardiff. And I'd not actually done it for two months. Yes, it's So hard. I had that sort of, oh, shit, I don't know this. And I had a real panic. But it went great. Good, Good. for me. <laughs> it is, well, that is an interesting phenomenon with... Uh, with I, 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 you know, you find that with touring. You do Edinburgh and you might have a couple of months off and then if you... Especially as I get older, my memory used to be really great, but then I'd, I'll be driving to a gig thinking I haven't even gone through it and then going, oh, my mm. God. But mainly it comes back, right? Mainly it sort yeah. of comes out. Yeah. But sometimes you have to listen to it a couple of times before you... You listen to it and thinking, I don't remember doing yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> <that's, laughs> I mean, the last time I actually did it, that I thought was, was going to be the last time, was at the Women in Comedy Festival, which is in Manchester. And that was, I think... Was it October? October that happens, so, yeah. Actually, so it was longer that I'd not done it for. And because it, it was the last time I was doing it, I did it drunk. Um, it was a very different show. <laughs> <laughs> very different. I mean, I found it a lot funnier. I don't think the audience <laughs> were that enamoured with it. So that was the last time I thought I was going to do it. And then I sort of... Because when I, I've done a show, and I know I sort of... When I'm done with it, I'm done with it. And I don't ever, I think, well, I've had what I want from it. I don't want, yeah. to, I want to think about something else now. But then when I got asked to do it, I was like, oh, right. I think it's, yeah. you know, for me, and, and it's really through Go Faster Strike for me, I wasn't getting, and none of my shows were getting the, recorded. You'd do them and they'd go. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, good, I'm glad it's gone. Yeah. But then, certainly as time passes by, you kind of go, oh, God, I'm so glad we actually ended up doing those. Because yeah. uh, those uh, the, uh, certainly the early shows I did would be completely lost and I wouldn't remember any of it mm -hmm. at all. And it's so nice just to have them existing. So I think you'll be very glad you've done it. They do a fantastic job as well, obviously. Mm -hmm. So the show's about your family, is it? Is that it's about not having strong... Yeah, oh, it's, about, it's about having... The, all the women in my family are legends, right? And I, they make me feel like a failure. Um, so it's about having really strong female role models and feeling like you can't really live up to their standards and the things that they've done. And then also about how I'm obsessed with male rock stars as well. <laughs> um, and how I find that I think they're the only people in society, really, who can be themselves and nobody asks any questions. And bad behaviour is accepted from them. Um, not that I behave badly uh, all the time. And it, I think it was about, as well, sort of the pressures on women and stuff and sort of the perceptions, like, sort of... Because I think there's a lot of pressure still... Obviously, there are a lot of pressure still on women to be a certain way and sort of the way women are portrayed um, on television and particularly in adverts, because, like, for, I do a whole bit about women in Malteser adverts. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand them. Um, the women in Diet Coke adverts wouldn't hang around with the Malteser advert women. That's how bad they are. <laughs> uh, so there's, there's a whole load of stuff about that and, and how there's no real variety in sort of women on television, really, I don't think, or in advertising. I think there's no real... There's still a lack of authenticity. So, yeah, it's a great laugh. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> really sold that, didn't I? <laughs> and there's some dick jokes in there. We can all enjoy that. Good. <laughs> I bored myself, then. <laughs> It's very. It's so difficult to talk about your own stuff. Yeah. I should have made you talk about each other's stuff. That would have been the way. Of, uh, We've it, not it. seen it. We've been not, too we, we, not, yeah, we haven't seen each other's show. That's bad, isn't it? We, I, yeah, should, it's bad. I should ask you about what you imagine the other show will be oh, like. Yeah. Next oh, time. yeah. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> chick shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, women. Something like that. But then, you know, all those things you're saying, I think, again, but it's the interesting that you're going back to creating your own stuff and you know then yeah. you're in charge the, the the having that autonomy which is both through stand-up and podcasts and so you know that those gatekeepers for tv and radio are there for a lot of people it's very difficult to get through through those mm -hmm. gates for lots of people and i think it's interesting what you say i know that janie godley who we've had on talks a lot about the, you know there's no working class scottish voices you know and in in and female voices in in tv in the same way you see it and i think there is that kind of and she's a brilliant comedian and doesn't get the 
the work she deserves to get, I think, and also has been going for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's also true of uh, many male comedians, I have to say as well. Yeah. But, but you know, that is that, that it's interesting that you just can now can take that me metal mm -hmm. and, and get on with it yourself. Yep. Um, but yeah, you were, you were into Oasis, I know, and you met, oh. Noel, you met Noel Gallagher, did you I recently? Did. Oh, yes, finally someone else has asked me. <laughs> yeah, I met, I met Noel Gallagher. No. No, it's not possible. It, it was possible and it happened. <laughs> oh, it was amazing. He's um, small enough to model sofas as well, he's isn't he? He's tiny, yeah, <laughs> he's absolutely tiny. He's only about, I'd say about five foot nine. Yeah, tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, met, I was. It was. I mean, what a day that was for me because I saw you after it, didn't you? And, uh, I wasn't very coherent. You were swaggering around the place in a parka. <laughs> is what you were doing. <laughs> that is exactly what I was doing. Uh, but it was lovely. You'll be pleased to know. Oh yeah, edge of their seats, yeah, mate. Don't yeah. give a shit. <laughs> don't don't a shit what a fucking millionaire behaves like. <laughs> Um, and I quite like, Kerry, you were talking about, you, you obviously write and direct a sketch group, the Gein's uh, Family Gift Shop, we were talking about earlier. Yeah. But you don't want to perform in it, and you've made a kind of conscious decision not to perform, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Because uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I've never really wanted to do, so the reason why I do stand-up and comedy is because I, uh, when I was growing up, I saw The League of Gentlemen, and I was like, oh, holy shit, it just felt like someone had made something for me. And uh, I was so excited by it. And then I sort of like forensically studied what they did. Uh, and I was like, okay, they met in university, so I should go to university because that's where I'll meet people to work with. And I, um, as soon as I sort of found, I knew I wanted to do comedy, but not really what. And then as soon as I started doing comedy, and uh, there was, yeah, and, and so we sort of half put this sketch group together. I just knew I was never to perform. Because I also like, I was doing stand-up by that point, and I all all the performance needs I felt like I had I was were being fulfilled. So this is something that I thought I could, you know, it, be a different sort of gross phrase coming up, creative challenge. <laughs> um, and I, I that I just wanted to really get stuck into with them to be a sort of a, a puppet master that you that you don't see. Um, I guess the Jeremy Dyson bit, but. Um, yeah, I, I, it's never been... I'm really, really bad at acting as well. And uh, unlike a lot of stand-ups, I don't kid myself that I'm good at it. So, like, I hate, the only time I act in something is when they say, you can't write this unless you have to act in it. Right. So I did something today where I'd written a thing and they were like, well, you, you have to be in it. And I did, like, a, a Halloween thing for Sky, like a little short, and they were like, you have to be in it. And then I tried to write myself as a corpse that a conversation happens over, but they wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> so the only time I'm ever in something is when they, it, they force me and I want to do the job, the writing job enough. But I, I, lo I love it. I love, like, it's such a different feeling from stand-up, which I also absolutely adore. But, like, you are in a gang and you kind of look after each other. And yeah. we're like, we've been so through. We had a, we've had a line-up change and we've had a spicy few years with, with everything that's been going on. Uh, we've threatened to be sued a few times. <laughs> um, just the three. Um, so, we, like, it's been difficult, but it is, like, this kind of family... Kind of, we do, yeah, sort of look after each other. And it's, it's nice because it feels like you share your victories... Because, I mean, you, you, you guys know this, that sometimes you have an absolutely blinding gig mm. and then you've got to go and get on a fucking rail replacement bus yes. yeah. from Preston home and you're like, but Noel Gallagher doesn't do yeah. this. <laughs> and it just feels so... It can feel very lonely sometimes. Um, but the lovely thing about Sketch Group is, like, when you die on your ass, you're doing it as a gang. Like, I feel if I'm watching them struggle at a gig, which doesn't happen often, like, I'm, I am there with them. Yeah. Um, uh, but like obviously when they rip it as well I get that elation like I've just had a, a great gig yeah I find it really satisfying cool and and, and what's the uh, the musical you're doing musical night oh yeah you should come and do it yeah, yeah. you're doing you're, you're well, doing you've it asked, yeah, you've yeah. asked me yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so that I love because uh, basically I love musical theatre but I'm dog shit at it um, but I was like why don't I make a show where I get to sing anyway because <laughs> um, I found that loads of comedians they love musicals or have yeah. at least one that they like I think most people even if you don't like musicals have one that you like so we do this show like a live band where comedians who are like me they've never been like good 
you can't do it if you can sing well, because that's not <laughs> the point. Like, no one wants to see, like, Rachel Paris is an amazing singer who does it in her act, so there's no kind of joy in singing her come on and smash her song. you got to pick people you think are shit, so thanks for doing it in June. <laughs> um, so it has to be people who are, like, willing to put themselves out there and go, this is a thing that I don't normally do. Yeah. And, like, the vulnerability is gorgeous, because you're used to watching comedians be so ass- self-assured and do this thing that they know that they can smash, and then just watching people just trying so hard at something they want to be good at it's just delightful and they make their own costumes <laughs> and it's just so so lovely it's it's the it's like the most joyous night it just feels like a school play uh, it's got real pride of britain awards to it like it's really like <laughs> love them like you can't you ever feel very uplifted by it yeah. um and it's so nice to see these you know big characters get scared and just <laughs> try really hard and then the audience like sing along and cheer and you can see them like growing in confidence it's yeah. so lovely it's a really fun night did i see was it brett goldstein doing the christmas muppet the Miss Muppet Christmas Carol. He did the carol. whole Muppet did Christmas whole. Carol in <laughs> yeah. six minutes. Wow. Uh, and that's costume changes as well. Because he, he's, so he's not bothered about musicals, but he's obsessed with the Muppet Christmas yeah. Carol. And so we put on a Christmas show just so he could do it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he had like chains and everything for the Marleys and then like t- talcum powder on his head. It was so good. I was watching a Muppet Christmas Carol we broke off to watch Brett Goldstein because we watch it every... My, my wife watches... I love that film anyway. It's great. I think it's an amazing film, but my wife's family watch it every year. We were watching it. I saw that come up and I said, we've got to watch this. So Possibly. we were able to compare him to the real... And how did the he real film. It was impossible to tell the difference between him and Kevin. <laughs> Absolutely impossible. Um, he won, uh, he won. Because the thing is that, that every, we have like about... I think usually about five acts and then at the end uh, we make the audience cheer for their favourite and the favourite wins some money for their chosen charity and mm. then they encore with their dream song and then he was singing something from Jesus Christ Superstar which wasn't as much of a bang I'll be honest and um, <laughs> so he took a shirt off and that did it for all of us so <laughs> there you go if you win okay. <laughs> bring out the big guns and that's not a tit thing <laughs> they're mine's lovely all, guns mine's all down here mine's okay. all down here I look quite good up, up this it's all there it's all just gone down there <laughs> Just never become, never become content. That's, that's David Threw's philosophy. That's why he's a thin man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Mackenzie Crook was disappointed. I didn't ask this question to him. And I should ask you, because there's a sort of... It's nearly a serial killer question, isn't it? Uh, if you... And I will ask you separately, but you can be in it together if you want. There's a little clue as to where we're going. Uh, if you had to be in a human centipede with two oh. other people, uh, you're in the middle... I'm assuming you know what the human centipede is. I know who, right, yeah, I know, yeah. I can know your straight So away. who would be in front and who would be behind? Uh, I would have Noel Gallagher in front of me yeah. and Liam Gallagher behind me. <laughs> <laughs> You'd shit in his mouth. I thought, I thought you, I would have picked it the other way around. No. <laughs> That's the right way. <laughs> Oh, I was get, my, my instant reaction was something really weird. Okay, let's have that. <laughs> well, I was going to be like, well, I love my mum and dad, but that's <laughs> so fucking weird, isn't it? I'm Welsh as well, so I'm doing fuck all to <laughs> with the stereotype. Yeah, I think I have my dad shit in my mouth, actually. <laughs> oh, please don't watch this on YouTube, Dad. <laughs> um, who would I have? Who would I like to have shit in my mouth? That's the question you're asking, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm. Well, oh, you know, who would you least not like? You know, so who would you least hate is what I'm trying to say. Who do yeah. I think's got nice tasting shit? It would probably be um, probably be someone Mary like... Berry. No, she's. Oh, I can't, I'll tell you afterwards. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, uh, it's the old one, is that? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the national treasure, Mary Berry. Well, yes. don't treasure her because her shit tastes really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, 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 what, that's what everyone <laughs> says about her. Out of all the TV personalities, her shit tastes really... Someone's gone around and tasted all the shit of all the, the TV personalities. I think and hers came out. Paltrow, shit would taste nice. Yeah, probably. So I think she believes some mad stuff, but she, she, you know, she seems to like... She, I think she survives on, like, thoughts and leaves, yeah. and it, I feel like I could eat those. Yeah. So I have Gwyneth Paltrow shit in my mouth, <laughs> and then whose mouth would I like to shit in? Um, <laughs> no one's ever been quite as gleeful about this question. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Um, you, I, don't I really... knew what you were thinking then, and you, you can't say that. No, can you? no, can't. There's two, and I can't say either of them. Um, 
uh, hers because she knows too many secrets. Okay. <sighs> I'd shit in your mouth, mate, so you can't spill any of my secrets. I don't want to do think, the podcast um, anymore. <laughs> I feel the human centipede shows a paucity of ambition is what I've been thinking. I, why is there only three? If I, if I did it, I'd, do, I'd try and get as many on as possible and then so they... In the end, it, the last one just fit, went with well, the first one. Oh, so it's a, <laughs> so like so a circle. It's a, a, a ring. Yeah, yeah. That's, is that possible? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. And you just have to really feed up the first one. As you're going round, you keep feeding, 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 so there's a good supply of poo to go through yeah. all of them. Sure. And then just... <laughs> and then you connect the circle up. <laughs> You know, it's, it takes something to beat the human centipede for tastelessness, but I think I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I the human like ringworm or something, should we call it? <laughs> I'd watch that. Yeah. I'd watch that. It'd be good. Um, I'll, I'll, ask you, so I'll ask you a random emergency question from the Emergency Question app, which is uh, downloadable for free on Android and uh, Apple. But watch out, there's another one called Emergency Questions. They're trying to steal from us, but they're no good. Look out for the little orange hat. Uh, have you ever been brainwashed? You work in a Catholic school, so yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I have then, 100%. Yeah. Did you were, you were you religious as a child? No. Uh, I, it was just the school close. My, my grandmother was sort of religious, but not in a mental way. Um, she just liked the festivals. And um, I think we all do. Yeah. And then sort of I went to Catholic school all the way through. Some very strange incidents that happened, uh, which I don't know, I, I suppose I can tell them, can't I? Tell them about that school trip they took you on the other day. Not so, the other day, a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm older than I look. Uh, I, the, right, so we ended up going on a, I was probably about 14, and all the girls from my, my year were, were rounded up and put on coaches to go on a trip that nobody knew about. And it was a lovely afternoon, which we spent uh, with some nuns watching videos of abortions. How rough is yeah. that? Yep. I went home to my mum and I said, I've just been to this thing and I don't think it was right. She went mad and complained to the school, which did no good because it was Catholic school. <laughs> And they do what the fuck they want, don't they, really? So, yeah, I've, I've, I've had attempted brainwashing, but it, ne it yeah. never worked. That never sounds worked. like the origin story of a serial killer. Yeah, it does, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was when. <laughs> Something clicked. <laughs> yeah. I don't, ever th I don't think I've ever been brainwashed, except, like, in the usual way, but the bloody patriarchy. But, like, no, I don't think anything specific. Although, I'm rich, so I'm kind of like, you know... Be your own person. Don't buy into all that bullshit. But I used to uh, obsessively read when I first went to university, like, you know, like, Closer magazine and, like, all those horrible magazines mm. that, like, ah, I was sexually assaulted by Peter Cheese, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I used to love all that. But um, I felt sad all the time and I didn't know why. Mm. <laughs> and then I got so skint I couldn't afford them. And then I was like, my self-esteem is going through the roof. <laughs> and I, even now, as with everything I know, was like, you know, like, I would like to consider myself an empowered woman, like, if I read one of those in a waiting room for five yep. seconds, I want to go and make myself sick in the toilets I, and I, feel sad. I had exactly the same thing that I used to read pretty much every women's magazine. In fact, there's a bit in my show, Her Majesty, about this. <laughs> it's coming out and go fastest, right? Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and I stopped reading them, and I had exactly the same experience that I felt so much better. Yeah. So much better. They're poison. They're yeah. horrible. So, yeah, that's the closest I've come. Okay. What is the most mundane encounter you've had with a celebrity? I want to give you mine that I've wrote in the answer. Oh, God, it's gone. Damn, I can remember what it was, though. Um, is uh, I met the bloke who used to be on Hollyoaks and then was on Casualty, who I think is married in real life to Topsy and Tim's mum in Topsy and Tim. <laughs> think I'm right. I met him uh, in a news agents in Balham and... Uh, <laughs> He thought he knew me, but he didn't know me. He just recognised me off the telly. <laughs> that was my most mundane. And then he went, oh, no, I've done that thing. Oh, I love him. <laughs> What's your most mundane encounter with it? It's got to be mundane. Yeah, because you just made mine sound quite showbiz. OK. So I might have to think on mine. Because, yeah, you've made mine sound exciting. Um, I, 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 I once met um, Alex James from Blur at in a, an event for the Manchester Food Festival. 
Oh, was he um, hawking his bullshit shoes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> few, very, very 90s band, that, innit? A few it? years ago, this was. And I, I used to like Blur as well, as well as Oasis. And I was like, oh, it's, it's Alex James from Blur. My friend said, oh, I'll, we'll go over and I'll, I'll, we'll start a conversation. Wish I hadn't. Uh, <laughs> tedious. Uh, I was like, oh, someone else has met him. Someone just went, yeah. I, I, was, I was like, oh, I'm a big fan of Blur and, you know, that. Yeah. Okay, and then he was like talking about his, the cheese, That's cheese uh, yes. and where he, he now lives. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna go and get a drink, bye." <laughs> and then just left. He was, yeah. he was. So he's going. Boring. I don't want to talk about blur because that's boring. But let's talk about cheese yeah. that I now. That's my current job. Oh, yeah. God, he looked really sad as well. Like, oh. I don't know. Because he, he was once in blur milk. and now he's making yeah, cheese for a living. Yeah. Damon Albarn's written a fucking opera. Of course he's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I've got one. Okay. At the Leeds Festival, uh, in whatever year it was, I met the cast of My Parents Are Alien. Oh, yes. And it was the shit mum. <laughs> because there was a good mum, and they swapped her for a shit mum. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they? Do you remember that? There was a good mum. The good mum. There was a good mum who she was on I Alan Partridge. What, what? My parents are aliens. No. That is enough to tell you what the elevator pitch is. Does anyone know what? Does anyone not know what? Actually, it is? now I look back, it's a huge dereliction of care. So uh, three children take, get taken out of the care system and put with people with, I'd say, borderline personality disorder, <laughs> who are aliens, and and then they just sort of parent them very badly. And that's the shtick. Do you have to smoke weed to watch this? No, no, it's for children. So, yeah. So it's... <laughs> yeah, it was when we were growing up. Maybe you're a little bit older than me, so you yeah. might just miss it. I was probably too old to be watching it. I did have many friends. Um, so, yeah, I met them. My parents were aliens, but I met the crap mum. The one I was going to say, but I think it might be too showbiz, is yeah. I was on a plane um, from Glasgow to Iceland. Whoa, sounds exciting. <laughs> and I saw... Um, uh, uh, no? Oh, I thought I was quite good. Um, and I saw... Bez from the Happy Mondays, oh, yeah. Yeah. and I went up to him and went, I went, excuse me, are you Bez? And he went, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. That is too good. I've uh, run uh, a half marathon and a marathon with the father from my parents are aliens, so. Oh, I'm s tell him I'm sorry he had one shit wife. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I went on a date with the, the shit, what you consider to be. Really? The <laughs> really? Um, But we realised we were better off as friends because in the back of my mind, I knew that you wouldn't think she was as good <laughs> yeah, as the yeah. three of Also, you've got those three kids to deal with out of the care system. You don't want to fuck around with that. Um, very lovely. Hello, Carla. How are you doing? I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry this lady was so rude about you. <laughs> and also, sorry, it didn't work out as a, a romantic partnership. Um, we're, better, we're better as friends. Would you rather have a clitoris in the crook between your thumb and finger or have a bionic nose? I mean, that's, no, there's no What's, question, is there? What does, bio, what does bionic mean? Bionic mean? nose means you, you can smell things from a long, really fast, from a long way away. Oh, bionic Clit nose. hand? Yeah. No, I'll go for the nose. I'll take the beak, mate. I'll have really? that. Really? Yeah. You've already got a clitoris, haven't you? You're not thinking. Yeah, but not there. Is it, where I mean, the whole time I'd have been like this. <laughs> like, we're chatting. There. Yeah, there. Yeah. I've got, well, I wouldn't have it there. Playing I'm, snooker. I've got, um, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Your podcast would be a lot more interesting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Rarely makes a trick shot these days. <laughs> I've, I've got a, a genuine um, sort of, what's the word? Slight phobia about that part of the hand. Have you? Yeah, I've, it's very, can you see there's a vein you, What, you're there? afraid of it? You see it throbbing? No. Can you not see it? Look, where? I mean, that would be terrible, look, terrible to be afraid of your, a part no, your of your own body. No, your shaking. Oh, there, not. look. There, that's the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... I've got a vein there that, that throbs, and it, it's just... Well, that's, I mean, that's a few nerve endings away from the <laughs> 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 We just... can rebuild you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a bionic nose. I think, you, do, you know, when you... I, I mean, look, uh, you're very lucky that you live here. It's great, blah, 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 But, like, London fucking stinks. And, like, I don't want to smell more of it. I don't want to smell more of nearly anything. Imagine, you know, imagine all the lushes you could smell at one point. Oh. Constant nosebleeds from the stress of it <laughs> and all the fucking bath bombs. No way. I'm a vegan as well. I decimate every toilet I go to. I don't want a fucking bionic <laughs> nose. No way. It's not, it's not a good question, but <laughs> hey, what great answers. So we're all right. We're off. We're off. 
Um, do you, well, let's do, I'll talk, we'll go back to the podcast. Um, have any of the killers that you've spoken about on the podcast listened to the podcast? Because some of them are still al- are living. Yeah, we think that there's a couple who would have sought it out. Yeah, but would, they, would they be allowed to? They, l- they let them do anything in prison now, Rachel. <laughs> uh, it's like a bloody holiday camp. Uh, I, uh, I um, don't, don't think that they would be allowed to, to listen to stuff like that. I do. No. Definitely. No. They've got PlayStations. Yeah, but I bet the games... I bet they're not playing bloody Grand Theft Auto and picking up sex workers. What do you think they're going to... Well, they're not fucking playing Tetris, are they? You don't need a PlayStation for that. They'll be playing, I don't know, Crash Bandicoot. (laughs) Ah, simpler times. And Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, that's what they'll be playing. Yeah, absolutely, Sonic. Um, I think... I think some maybe... I'm not sure. It's a bit weird. It's a weird question. Like, it gives me the creep slightly. Serial killers, yeah. most of them are the kind of people who, again, comedians Google themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if they would have access to that, but I think they would certainly have an interest. And if not, there'll be people who are writing to them who will say, so-and-so spoke to you, because mm-hmm. they will search everything to do with them. I think they'll be aware. Some of them will be aware of our work. <laughs> <laughs> work. <laughs> um, yeah, I th- but I don't know if they... If they are allowed to listen, I, I think that some of them definitely yeah. would. Because yeah. I, I, for a while, I um, went on a couple of, like, serial killer Facebook groups to mainly plug the podcast. And it... I mean, it's a, it's a spicy old world that... Like the stuff that was yeah. going on there, I was like, no, not for, not for me. Well, you you, jo- you joke about um, the podcast stopping you writing to people in prison, but th- there is this phenomenon of of large, I think it's mainly women, isn't it, who write yeah. into, yeah. Yeah, no, write into, into, write yes. into serial killers, it's and some occasionally married. I mean, occasionally married like criminals. Yeah. At least I don't know if the serial killers have successfully. It's, it's very. And we would never. And we we said that was a joke. Obviously, we, would ne- we we were not interested in anything like that. There's sort of this whole other side to the, of people having an interest in serial killers and like watching a documentary and you know doing a podcast about them uh, to people who wear there's like murderbilia people wear t-shirts with serial killers on um, I once and I remember telling you this years ago I used to work in a rare books library in Manchester I know with my accent <laughs> and uh, a woman walked in and she had a tote bag with Myra Hindley on it. Oh, God. Play the room, love. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that whole other side that we find really bizarre. Yeah. And like we never want anything to do with. Yeah. It's and I think, yeah, that's the bit that I find very strange. I find it really strange. The only reason I'm very hardline actually. I don't think if you if you're in prison as a serial killer, I don't think you should be allowed communication from people who are writing to you as fans as such. I just don't see how that is a thing that happens. I I think it's, I mean, each to their own. I wouldn't do it, but I don't think you should... I think the art of letter writing is dying. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> Well, no, I can like. I, I don't think that people should be stopped from because uh, I believe in rehabilitation. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I do absolutely. But so I think they should be allowed to, you know. But do has a any robbing. serial killer ever been re- well, that, rehabilitated? We, no. we don't. Know. Well, there was. Oh, there's a great one. Not great. Uh, there's um, <laughs> an interesting Are you one. Jack. Jack Unterweger, yes, who's like this, who's, was it German? Um, so he was a serial killer who was incarcerated and then he, they were, there was like, he was very smart and eloquent and so there was this huge sort of like intellectual movement to release him from prison because I think he started writing in there and people mm. were like, Listen, this is a ma- people can be rehabilitated. So he got let out, became sort of a celebrity, was in high society, was writing these books. He used to be and on then, all sort of art shows and talk shows yeah. and, and things like that. Yeah, it would be, yeah, sort of those round table things of, of you know, smart people. And then these murders started happening <laughs> and uh, using a very similar MO to what he used to do. And then the police would come to him for advice <laughs> on how to catch the guy. And he's like, I guess you just have to have your eyes open. <laughs> yeah, he started murdering again and right. then was, uh, has been put away now. So, I, I, yeah, I, obviously I do believe in... I believe in the idea of rehabilitation. I think I'm yet to see it. And I think mm. some serial killers as well have said, oh, I shouldn't be allowed out. That I'm, yeah. I'm safest here. 
I wouldn't write. They, they're really on this Facebook group. They're really into writing to them. Yeah. So they were like, oh my god, I got a letter back from Dennis Nielsen, which is actually quite a big deal because he is quite a private man. But <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> like the royals. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they were really sort of like, yeah. what should I say? What should I ask? And people are like, he'll go cold on you if you ask about the crime. So you should talk about the Labour Party, and <laughs> you should talk about these things. And yeah, they were really sort of into it. And that you could tell there was kind of like a frisson of like that was. Like so, it was how you would talk about. Oh my god, that boy texted me back, mm. and that I was like, Gah! it was. I felt really uncomfortable yeah, about it because yeah. I think there is a sexual element there that you know s someone more educated than me could explain away. But it is, it is a weird mm. thing. I think we've been lucky that I say the majority of people that do listen to our podcast are not that side of the people that have an interest in serial killers. Well, you're we probably too. I mean, you, you're sort of. You, you're too flippant, probably, and you, you're not. I mean, you're taking it seriously, but you're not taking it seriously. Yeah, and, we do, and so we... I think I think they. The, it, I would imagine those people would be annoyed by you for, yeah, yeah. for <laughs> daring not to, you know, for not taking their heroes exactly because mm. we think that they're pieces of shit. Yeah. yeah, like that. That whereas I think I guess the people writing to them don't think that. I think sometimes they were. There's a guy who's who. I need another word than serially, um, who uh, regularly writes to serial killers and poses as different people mm. to try and sort of like goes, right, and he learns about the serial killer and goes, I think that they'll respond to a lonely woman in her 40s. Right. Who's a, and they will write to them to try and get them to chat. And, and it's to put himself at the centre of the case. It's another way of vicariously putting himself in, mm -hmm. in the public eye in like some weird reflected glory that I yeah. think is equally fucking bizarre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I suppose like there's an element where people, you know, you want... All of this industry comes from people wanting to understand what drives someone to do that. Yeah. Um, and I sub but also a little, there's a there, I mean there's a frisson even if it's not a sexual thing there's a frisson of fear or you know it's it totally. is mm -hmm. it's a, an interesting thing Wh whatever level you're entering into it on is still a little odd but I kind of I get it and I think as as comedians I think as well you know it, it's it's talking about subjects that you're not meant the, it's the kind of subjects that comedians would talk about in backstage rooms mm, yeah and, it, I, and if you get a group of doctors together they would tell terrible stories in the back room of the being the, the, the hospital you know but as comedians you know you can push it and i think in a way your podcast does that you know that you know there's i mean even that we're talking about that plane the suicide plane thing most yeah, comedians yeah. would have a joke about that but wouldn't be able to do that joke anywhere you know or, or even an observation about it because it's not really you're not really joking about it but it's you know that's that's that that's the bit i think that connects comedy as well to it you know it's that fascination with um with the kind of the macabre and the and and the not not being able to comprehend it, you try you read these books in the hope that you'll somehow understand. But we're never if you're not a psychopath, you're never going to understand what mm. being well, a psychopath is. is. The so. thing, our, like our listeners tend to be women and yep. gays because we're the ones that get murdered. So what? I think we're the ones that are interested in like tend to be really interested in true crime. And like, I was speaking to someone about it the other day who's a I think that they're they're an academic that studies this kind of thing. They're like, yeah, women tend to be more into true crime or obsessed yeah. with true women, crime. Uh, women are the biggest buyers of true crime books um, and magazines and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because we're usually like it's it's sort of like a survival guide. That's yeah. how this academic was describing it to me. It was like, well, that's your thing. Like, guys are like, well, I'd fight the gut and be like, no, I would just, I'd maybe hit him with my shoe and then I'd get murdered. Like, you know, like, <laughs> so finding out how and why these people work is sort of yeah. a self-preservation mm -hmm. thing. Sure, sure. And do you think, you you know, you've done 40-odd, 40, 40 is it more 46 or something you've done? Yeah, about uh, that, isn't it? Podcast, so, yeah. not murders. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, is, what a hundredth episode that's going right? to Are you in danger of running out or is it a, a, a never-ending Well, I, I usually pool? say to, to that, as long as there's men in the world, we'll always have serial killers. <laughs> um, but, I mean, because we, we have done so many episodes recently, we will never run out. There's always... Because we do quite a lot of historical ones as well. Yeah. Um, but we are... We sort of... Now we're thinking, we all say, who should we do? That's what we say, don't we, for the next episode. Who should we do next time? And we sort of, we've done pretty much all the big ones. We've still we? got some heavy hitters. We've on still the, got a back, few. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we it's... We we'll, did a we'll three-parter on Fred and Rose, and it was the most exhausting three oh. weeks of my fucking life. Over Christmas as well, it was. Yeah, that was... 
It's just the way it fell. In fact, we released one on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, people would rather listen to that than fucking listen to their family for <laughs> any longer. <laughs> but yeah, I guess we have a lot of the big ones, that, mm. like the Bundys, the ones that people have heard of, we've, we've done. There's still a few. Yeah. Um, but I get about every day... I know when a new serial killer has been found because my Twitter and Instagram and emails yeah. go fucking mental. <laughs> I, when Ian Brady died, oh. yeah. my phone wouldn't stop ringing. Yeah. Like it was... I thought my dad had been injured. But everyone was like, Ian Brady's dead. Yeah. I'm like, good. I'm happy. It, but it's, it's like told every me. bit of. So you got messenger pinging, your WhatsApp was going. Yeah. I was like, what's going on? Oh, right. Okay. As yeah, if, you know. everyone tells you. But also, serial killers get found all the time. Mm -hmm. But we have to, like... So we try and, uh, like... You have to be careful where you pick them as well because, um, uh, like, China and Russia are very quiet. They shut that shit down. Mm. If there's a serial killer, you won't find much information about them because they like to pretend that that just doesn't happen yeah. in their country. I think, Whereas, yeah, I think like, the shortest episode we ever did was a Chinese serial killer. Oh, and it was me it? banging on about Chinese hymens for most of it. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, 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 do you know what those are? You don't want to know. I, I think it's fascinating, right? So what it is, is you can buy these... Uh, d uh, what are they called? Like, so it's a, it's a fake hymen, and it prosthetic. says... Prosthetic. Yeah, yeah, but it's not a prosthetic. You whack it up there, and, it, and it's, it's like, so you can hide your shame on your wedding night. All the language around it is gross. And then you whack it up there, and, and when, it get, when it gets broken, some blood comes out. And, uh, and then after, like, 20 minutes, it just disintegrates into you. Isn't that the fucking worst? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure it compares with the crimes of the oh, Fred yeah, and no, Fred actually, Rosemary yeah, yeah, West. That's true. But, <laughs> It's not the worst thing we've talked about during this podcast, <laughs> but it is uh, uh, unsavoury, yes. It's unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> and un it's a shame that people feel they have to worry about stuff. We like always, that. I've just realised, we never know what to do. People always ask us for merch. I think we should get branded ones of those. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I would like a hymen with my face on it. That's why yeah. the, the ladies could put up there. Yourself. I just said that it's like a little branded Chinese hymen, my <laughs> my face. So know that know that ladies are putting that up there. No, okay. You'd buy you that, want, wouldn't you? What you're saying is you want your face smashed in, <laughs> yeah. By a dick, yeah. which is so weird. That's what I do want. <laughs> and a little bit of blood to come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! God, and people um, think our podcast is strange. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Mac oof. Mackenzie Crook talked about all this, though, didn't he? <laughs> I've just, I've just wet myself. Oh, oh no! I mean, I am quite old. <laughs> it was this bottle of water. I forgot it was down my expensive chair. It don't worry, it hasn't gone on my Wookie book. <laughs> that's what uh, Russell Brand calls it. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> something that's if someone else has just someone else said that on Twitter. A couple of people, thank you for those people for giving me my second joke of 2018. <laughs> We're only two months in. This is not bad, or three months if you're listening at home. Um, it's been really fascinating to, uh, to chat with you and, and uh, lovely to meet you both. I don't think I've properly met either of you before. No. Um, and uh, do listen to the podcast and go and catch the... Are you, are you touring uh, imminently? You're doing Edinburgh? Yeah. Well, we actually... Here on Sunday, uh, three o'clock. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's some tickets left. Yep, yeah, there's there's not many. There are a few tickets left for this Sunday at three o'clock. Um, we use these chairs actually. Do you? Time. Yeah, they let's have a go. They went. These are Richard Herring's chairs. Can't, yeah. can't allow that. So we went like that. <laughs> <laughs> only I'm allowed to. Only I'm allowed to spill on fluid on the. Um, don't want you on them with your Chinese hymens. <laughs> <laughs> I said when I sat on this, I went, this would be a terrible chair to come on in. That's what I <laughs> you said. Did, you did, actually. Because it would leave a hell of a mark. Anyway. Um, um, so, yeah, we're here on Sunday. Uh, yeah. And then... Glasgow sold out. Cardiff, there's still some tickets for. That's in April. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's... Oh, and then we're go oh, I think we're going to do a couple in Edinburgh. Yep. Uh, and maybe a Christmas special here. And then America, mm -hmm. we think. Gonna Just, crack America. Ooh, ooh, well, this is the thing: is like it's lush, it's it's so lovely, and we love everyone who listens. But like America's like these two British girls, <laughs> um, and I don't think American women speak the way that we do. Um, uh, not on anything that isn't like premium pay channel. So I think they're fascinated with the idea yeah. of what we are. Um, so yeah, America was where most people started listening to us first. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're going to go and do some dates there. It's going to be so exciting, isn't it? It's going to be great. So exciting. Yeah. Oh, it's so brilliant. It's such a brilliant, uh, you know, 
that, that you've created this out of you know and done it all yourselves and it's uh, mm. and it's and it's so successful. So uh, give a massive round of applause. <laughs> so I guess Kiri and Rachel and gentlemen, Thank you. we'll be back next week with more of the same. Who's it next week? Peter Bainham and Catherine Bryan. Is that right? Cool. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Bye. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>